everyone, it's Lorelai. In the last episode, we talked about Deirdre's jump, which if you remember, I can jump over. And once I land on them, they get stunned. And if I start over, uh, I don't land on them, they don't get stunned. <laughs> That's a good thing. Always have to double check that. Anyway, in this episode, we are going to talk about uh, the status effect, the stun. Now, I only have one status effect right now, but I'm hoping to apply the same logic that I used for that stun for all the future um, status effects that I might have. So fingers crossed it works. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so let's look at this stun action, which is what is turning stun onto the slimes. So first it is locking onto the slimes that it hit. So lock objects touched by this object's attack detection, uh, whoever's an enemy that got hit with this attack detection, which was uh, here. I then have some locked objects so I can kind of control some of their switches and variables uh, on an instance by instance basis, uh, which is nice. So with my locked object, I'm going to turn its debuffed switch to on. And again, I only have one monster now, but when I make more and I have to duplicate this guy, they will all need to have this switch called debuffed, which is not a problem, I don't think, as long as I, I'm diligent in making sure that everyone is relatively equal. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so debuffed is on. I'm turning debuff to on. And then I'm setting a variable called debuff to a certain number, which I have set to one right now. This debuff is going to change depending on what debuff I'm giving that character or that, that monster. So one is going to be, I wrote it here, stun. One is going to be stun. Two might be confused. Three might be silence. And like four might be poison or something like that. Uh, but for right now, I have it set to number one, and then I've got my two uh, cooldown switches here, which we will talk about in the next episode. <laughs> uh, but first is stun. So let's look at our monster because now we've got a switch and a variable set on our monster, on our locked target. If we go to common actions, we have debuffed on, that you'll see here, debuffed on. So if debuffed is on, then do this thing. What are you going to do? You generate a child called status effects. Okay. And status effects is down here. Let's look at status effects. Okay. Apply status effect. So all of the status effects, hopefully, will be in this one object. This object uh, will be stun, will be confused, will be silence, will be poison. Uh, it, so that I only have to edit it all in one place. To determine what status it becomes, uh, it's gonna look at its parent to see what its parent's debuff is. So its parent's debuff is one. And so we could have one monster over here that has a debuff of one, and one monster over here that has a debuff of two, and then they will uh, be two, two different status effects because they are technically child objects. They're two different instances. <laughs> the problem with this method is that we can only have one debuff on at a time. And so that's something that I do need to fix, is that right now only one debuff. You can't be stunned and poisoned because debuff can't be one and also another number. So I might need to do debuff one, debuff two, debuff three, and then say something like if debuff one is greater than zero, which means it is one or two or three or four, then don't set the new debuff to debuff one, check debuff two. Uh, <laughs> that's that's hypothetical right now. That's That might be how I deal with that. So we can have a maximum of maybe three or four or five debuffs Right now it's set to one for testing purposes. Not a problem. Anyway, debuff is one, so I know that means stun. I know that means stun. The first thing we're doing under stun is we are turning our parents incapacitated to on. Uh, this I don't love. I don't love that I had to do this, uh, which is just they can't really do anything. They're stuck on idle. The reason for this is because sometimes they were attacking and then they would get stunned and then they would be stuck in attack, <laughs> which was awful because then they would be um, constantly using their attacking frame uh, collision thing to like constantly be hurting my characters and it was it was the worst. It was not a good a status effect. <laughs> so we've got incapacitated, which is just idle and they turn back to go to player when incapacitated is off. So I don't I this is more of a band-aid solution, but it works. So, you know, I can't complain. 
Then we're applying a database. Yay, I found a use for the database. It's very exciting. <laughs> so we've got a database called status effects. So let's go look at that. Here we go. Status effects. My first database in my list right now. Uh, well, it's the first and then I have another one here, but ignore that one. <laughs> That's another episode. Uh, I'm going to be putting all of my status effects here and then all of the things that they affect here uh, on the in the columns. The first row that I have I set to zero and that's just because the first row is going to be zero is going to be uh, you can refer to this as a number and it's going to be zero and then this is going to be one and so I wanted stun to be one because stun is one for me so what I could do actually is apply database directly to status effect because we have okay so let me let me go back <laughs> um, but anyway stun has the variables horizontal movement vertical movement animation frame this minus one just makes it so that they're kind of frozen um min attack max attack that's because they were attacking me even while frozen uh, because of their animation frame and i don't understand why so i just set it to zero because they're stunned whatever <laughs> right it doesn't matter uh if they can't attack okay so back here we've got uh apply database Apply status effects, the row stun, apply stun to the parent object, which is the slime. So we're applying all of the variables that stun has to the parent um, instead of doing it like individually one by one. And then we're showing text. Now this is the plugin action text, uh, but you can do this with any text. Okay, I just wanted it to kind of move around. It's set to, um, it's set to this display type of drop. There's a whole bunch that I could choose from, but I picked drop and it says stunned. Wow. Uh, <laughs> if I preview that, I wonder what it looks like. Stunned. So, yeah, I don't know. It's it's whatever. I might change that text or remove it. We'll see. Uh, and then I got the tricky part here. Um, well, I've got after a certain time passes, I have it set to two seconds. I really wish you could apply a variable to after a certain time passes. How awesome would that be if you could do that? Because then you could put the database, you could add uh, duration to this column and then set the duration to two, right? Two seconds. And then say after two seconds passes, after that, you know, variable instead of, manual, but whatever. <laughs> it's fine. There's probably a script. Maybe I'll, I'll look that up, but um, actually, yeah, maybe I will look that up. Anyway, after, after two seconds passes, we're going to remove the stun. And this I did actually have to use a script for. Uh, I got the script help from the unofficial Pixel Game Maker MV Discord link in the description. Uh, so thank you so much for this script help. Uh, but the, what the script is doing is basically, let's go in here actually, and I'll show you from, from here. We are actually just resetting uh, variables from our parent object. So we could reset variables on object self or the common, but, um, and same with switches, but I really needed to reset the parents to variables. So I have a script. Okay. And so the script is basically, okay, we've got find parent instance ID, get the, uh, parent object instance, and then use that parents, a uh, variable instead of object self or whatever. And then we are resetting these variables. The variables are set by ID. So we've got 18, 23, 24. Uh, 23 and 24 are the horizontal and vertical movement. I think 18 is the animation frame. And then I still need to add in min and max attack, which I'll do later because uh, I added that later. I added that after I had the script in. Uh, so it's it's just a basic array. So this I can edit. <laughs> That's easy enough. Uh, but maybe I'll ask, maybe I'll ask for a script for after a certain time passes. So that I can set this to a to a variable in, instead of a manual number. Okay. Uh, so after after that, then I reset all of uh, those variables, and then I say my parents switch debuff is now zero because it's not one anymore, and an incapacitated is off. I am not turning off debuffed debuffed on. Um, why aren't I? 
because I'm turning it off already at the beginning of apply status effects. So debuffed is kind of a misleading name. I think I should call it debuff initialize would make a little more sense. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do that live. Let's do a live. So not debuff, but debuff initialize. Um, that way it's very clear that it's not necessarily that they are debuffed, but rather that we're starting the debuff process. Okay. So that I think is the status effect. It's not very difficult. Um, the script sucked <laughs> trying to get this to work, but thank goodness for all the help that I get on that discord. Mm, we have one common action. It's not really worth talking about, but, uh, if the parents HP is zero, then destroy this object because sometimes they would die while they were stunned and then stun would never go away from the map, which was pretty silly. Uh, yeah, so that's it. And the next episode, we can talk about the cooldown, the cooldown for her ability. <laughs> uh, although, actually, uh, the cooldown as it stands right now is a little wonky. I'm not a huge fan of how it is, but, you know, maybe it's not the end of the world. Maybe I can still make a video about it. I mean, it works, so, you know, no reason to change it right now, I don't think. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I will talk to you guys later. Bye!